today, I present to you a topic that combines the realms of space exploration and medical breakthroughs. Welcome to my presentation on Exploring Space Biology, a revolutionary path to curing neurodegenerative diseases. Hi, my name is Nina Seerong Lee, and I'm a rising senior at Korean Minjo Leadership Academy. Some of my extracurriculars are listed below, and I've been focusing my career in mainly mock trial biology and astrophysics as my interests lay in space biology. Space biology offers a new approach to understanding and finding a cure for neurodegenerative diseases. As we contemplate the possibility of human migration to space, it becomes crucial to explore the effects of space on our bodies, particularly the intricate workings of our brains. By studying life in a space, we gain unprecedented insights into cellular and molecular processes, providing valuable knowledge that can revolutionize our understanding and treatment of neurodegenerative conditions. This interdisciplinary field not only holds promise for the future of space exploration, but also offers tangible benefits in improving human health here on Earth. In short, I'll be introducing why and how we should utilize space biology to find cures for geriatric diseases like Alzheimer's. President of Teledyne Brown once said, our hope is that this experiment in space brings the scientific community closer to unlocking the mysteries of this life-altering disease that affects so many people worldwide every day. Facilities in International Space Station helps convenient investigations in microgravity. For example, microgravity science globe box enables study of the formation of potentially destructive amyloid fibrils for protein clusters like those found in the brain tissue of patients battling neurodegenerative diseases. Such illnesses may cause neurons to become damaged or inoperative. And these neurodegenerative diseases are known to be more detrimental to elderly. Substantial evidence shows that telomere length, the hallmark of Alzheimer's, is associated with aging. Telomere shortening acts as a counting mechanism that drives replicative senescence by limiting the mitotic potential of normal cells. Because telomere length fluctuates with the passage of time, it has received considerable attention as a biomarker for Alzheimer's, and a lot of researchers are focusing on mechanisms of telomere length to find cures for such diseases. Telomere length's association with the risk factors of Alzheimer's disease include factors like BDNF, IGF-1, VGF, and beta amyloid. To briefly introduce the pathways of some risk factors, Reduction of BDNF increases the Alzheimer's probability as BDNF works to promote the survival of nerve cells. Low level of IGF-1 also increases the disease's probability of IGF-1 regulates neurotropic signaling. Low level of VGF becomes neurotoxic, and high level of beta amyloid triggers degeneration that results in loss of memory and cognitive ability. All these risk factors are known to be associated with the length of telomere. Within the Rotterdam study, quantitative PCR was done to measure mean leukocyte telomere length in 1,961 participants with 233 patients who later developed Alzheimer's disease. As a result, U-shaped association between telomere length and risk factors of Alzheimer's disease was shown. Similar U-shaped association was shown for all-cause dementia. And it meant that shorter and longer telomere length were both associated with increasing risk of Alzheimer's disease in the general population. And this is where space biology enters. Major hallmark of Alzheimer's, like telomere length, are controlled differently in microgravity, like what it is in the International Space Station. Experimentation in space environments, including microgravity, will potentially lead us to a way to solving grand questions like how do we cure Alzheimer's? One facility that significantly helps us is Ring Shear Drop. The Ring Shear Drop is a module for the International Space Station to study sheared fluid interfaces and their influence on amyloid fibril formation. Here, scientists sim simulate microgravity in the laboratory using a density matched liquid surrounding the drop. Upon shearing, the drop's deformation away from a spherical is found to be the result of viscous and inertial forces balanced against capillary force. In such facility, 
Space biologists observe activity of proteins or organelles without the influences of the solid walls of containers. In our case, altered mechanisms of telomeric proteins that control the formation and degradation of telomeres and microgravity are observed. They also examine the formation and growth of amyloid fibrils closely associated with neurodegenerative diseases. This will contribute to better understand such diseases and potentially lead us to a new treatment. NASA's twin study is one example that showed altered telomere length in space environment. One of the twins of relatively similar telomere length before spaceflight left Earth for about a year. While the Earth-bound twin's telomere length remained relatively stable over the course of this study, the space twin's telomere were longer during the space flight and upon return to Earth shortened rapidly, resulting in many more short telomeres after space flight than before. The exact reason for such fluctuation is unknown, while two strongest candidates are space radiation and microgravity. However, when telomere length from residents of high background radiation like Iran or India were in examined, no significant telomere length alterations were shown. In other words, while both space and certain earthbound regions may expose people to high LED radiation, different impacts were shown. This is because we still lack understandings on how telomeric, replicative, or mitotic proteins work in space. And this is the very reason why we should invest more in space biology. In conclusion, we should utilize space biology, especially the fact that fundamental laws of metabolism differ in space to develop cures for incurable diseases that target especially elderly. Between 2015 and 2050, the proportion of the world's population over 60 years old will nearly double from 12% to 22%. In a few years, we will be solving the major health issue for a fifth of the world's population with space biology. Despite our extensive research efforts, we have encountered a stagnant phase. To overcome this obstacle, we must embrace a novel approach known as space biology, which introduces a radically different metabolism to make a globally healthy society. These are the references. And special thanks of gratitude to NASA, Journal of Biomedical Engineering and Mr. Kim, and thanks for the audience for providing me such valuable opportunity to present about the importance of space biology, and thank you so much for listening. If you have further questions, you, have, you can contact me via the social media.